now let's get really meta and talk about a metadata schema to describe metadata records. The Metadata Encoding and Transmission Standard, better known as METS. Now, this diagram here is an image from the METS manual, which I will link to, and it shows the structure of a METS record. First of all, you've got the container element, which we've seen before in um, other XML-based schemas. Uh, you've got a header, you've got sections for different types of metadata for descriptive metadata, administrative metadata, structural metadata. Then you've got a section to describe the files that make up a resource and behavior that that resource can exhibit. And let's look at each briefly. Um, METS is a very complex business in order to really get your head around it would honestly take hours and we're not going to spend that long on this. I just want to introduce you to the pieces of a METS record, which can, to be fair, be quite long. So again, this is a diagram from the METS manual. The uh, First of all, every section of metadata has its own unique header. Uh, so this is the header for the header section. Um, you've got a unique ID for the METS record itself. You've got a creation date, you've got a modification date, you've got the status of the record, is it still valid, etc. Um, then you've got a section for agents. Some entity that has had some influence over the METS record is an agent. Then, you know, some, some entity that created the METS record or modified the METS record, um, the uh, role that that agent has played, the type of entity that it is, for example, is it an individual, an organization, etc. Um, and the role that a type of agent can play is they're, they've created the record, they've edited the record, they own the intellectual property rights for the record, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and you also have the ability to have alternative um, IDs, right? The METS record itself has an ID, and that can be a URI like what we've discussed in the past, a unique identifier in the form of a URL, but there could be many other forms of identifiers. There are lots out there. There's, you know, digital object identifiers, there's OCLC, num OCLC numbers, etc. right? And a single METS record could have multiple forms of identifier, and so you have the ability to duplicate the alt record the alternative ID. Now, please note that the header, all of this, just is talking about the METS record itself. We haven't even gotten to description of the resource being described by the METS record yet. We come to that now. The Descriptive metadata about a resource is very much like what we've seen in the past. Again, we have the header for the descriptive metadata section, um, and you have ID, again, which is a unique ID for that object. Um, you have LOC type, locator type, and again, that is the type of ID that you're using. Is it a URI or a digital object identifier or an OCLC number or, or what have you? And this is different than the ID in the header, which was for the METS record itself. This is for, this is the ID for the record, the resource being described by the record. Then you get 
data like MIME type, the type of file format. Is it an HTML file? Is it an XML file? Is it a JPEG or a PDF or, or whatnot? The size of the file, the uh, date it was created, etc. So description of the resource itself. Administrative metadata has several parts to it. Rights up here is intellectual property rights. Who owns the copyright or other form of intellectual property rights? The source is what is the source object or the parent resource from which other versions of the resource are derived, right? That could be the Mona Lisa where there are multiple multiple digital representations of the original object of the Mona Lisa, or that could be some parent digital object of which multiple derivative works are derived. Um, technical administrative metadata contains technical details about how a resource was created and um, that section is digital provenance, right? Which contains data about the provenance of a resource. Who or what organizations are behind the creation and modification of that resource? What has been done? What modifications have been made to that resource over time? The file section. Now, a single resource could be a compound object, right? You can have one thing made up of multiple parts, right? You can have a book that's made up of multiple pages, or you could have a collection, like a museum collection, that's made up of multiple individual things that can stand on their own, but collectively you could consider them a museum exhibit, which is conceptually at least a single entity. Right, so the file section describes the collective entity. Now, the file group is data about the set of files as a whole. Right, and remember, we're talking about digital objects, so each one is going to be a file, a digital file. So file group is the group, the set, of files collectively and file is going to be repeated one file section for each object in the file group and under file you get data about the location and the content of each individual file and transformation is data about any transformations that have been made to a file that need to be made in order to display it, right? Does a file need to be decompressed, for example, as you would do with a zip file, for example, or does it need to be decrypted? for example, before that file can be displayed, right? There's a difference here between the file as it's stored and the file that's displayed and the transform is what transformation needs to be made to the stored version before it can be displayed to a user. The structural map is considered kind of the heart of a METS record and it describes I think it's obvious, the structure of a resource. Right? For example, you've got the order in which parts should be displayed, right? Think a book. If you've got each page as its own file, obviously the order is going to matter if you're going to use the entire set of files. You want to have them in the correct order so that the book, the collective entity, makes sense. The pointer, the file pointer, is a pointer to an individual file, an individual object that may be just one thing as a part of a set. 
Uh, and then you get data about the, the area section is data to describe how to display the file, right? You get, and to be, um, you get elements like shape and coordinates, right? What is the shape on the screen in which to display the resource? Or where are the coordinates on the page that that resource should be displayed? Next, we have structural link, which is actually quite simple compared to the other pieces of a METS record, which is really just a, uh, specifies a set of hyperlinks between different pieces of the structural map, right? If there are relationships between different files, for example, multiple files that are part of a file set, then this just provides with links to the different files. Then, a really interesting part, you can specify behavior that the resource is intended to exhibit when it's displayed. So, for example, an image file should open up a specific type of image viewer, or some file, when it's opened, should prompt the user to authenticate before that user is allowed to view or access or modify the file, right? Some behavior that a resource should exhibit when it is used. So you get the behavior section here and you get B type, the type of behavior, right? authentication or open an image editor or whatnot. And label is, you know, the description, the narrative description of the behavior. Um, and you get the ability to specify an interface, the interface definition. What is the interface or web service that should be used for that behavior to happen? And then the mechanism is the software, the executable code that should be run to implement that behavior when that file or resource is displayed. All of that was fairly complicated and we only just barely scratched the surface of METS, right? The point here is that METS is an attempt to be a comprehensive metadata schema. It includes elements for all the data you might ever possibly need if you are in charge of maintaining digital resources. If you are a library or a museum or an archive or a company or any kind of organization or even individual that's maintaining a set of digital resources. Everything you might possibly ever need to describe resources, describe the files that make up those resources, to provide data about the provenance of those files, the structure of those resources, provide information about the behavior and the, the executable code that should be run to display those resources. Anything you might ever possibly want to indicate about a set of resources, the METS schema is intended to provide elements so that you can specify all of that. It's really supposed to be this sort of meta metadata schema.